Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to do a flip through of my journal from 2012. That's a solid six, seven years ago. As with any journey and as with anything in life, to be able to know where to go and how to move forward, it's important to know where we've been and it's important to check in with ourselves every once in a while to remind ourselves how far we've come. So I think this is a great exercise for you as well. If you've been feeling stuck, if you've been feeling stressed that you don't really know what you're doing or where you're going to take a step back and be like, aha, so I'm a very, very different person from who I was even a year ago. And for me, it's gonna be six, seven years ago. So that's some context. Let's, let's dig into this. First page, it says December 31st, 2011. Tomorrow is the first blank page of a 365 page book. Write a good one. This is from the good old Tumblr days. I don't use Tumblr anymore. Maybe you hip kids still use it. Saw this on one of the posts and I was like, I'm so inspired. I'm gonna write something every single day for the year of 2012. Definitely didn't do that, but let's get started all right the first thing is a quote from marilyn monroe haha <laughs> so not basic good things fall apart so that better things can fall together sure year 2011 resolutions so what i did was i printed out my resolutions from 2011 and i reviewed it this is really good all right so these are my resolutions from 2011 maintain a good relationship with my parents especially my mom take my aunties out on dates and help my mom with real estate motivate all the cousins to visit grandparents twice a week live a healthier lifestyle overall fix sleeping patterns sleep by 12 wake up by nine it's a solid nine hours of sleep 9 a.m i meant 9 a.m oh man the luxuries of being a young child with no responsibilities and uh, no work. Eat more nutritious meal, gym consistently, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Stop be a B word and go to class, keep the 4.0. Finish off strong and transfer, transfer, transfer. Attain real estate license by the end of summer. Find legit intern slash job this summer. Stop being such a princess brat badge. Control the temper, arguments, take a deep breath, swallow some spit, and shut the F up. Become even more open-minded, selfless, and optimistic. Life goes on. Discover undisclosed spots. Spend more time in the great outdoors. Become a better food connoisseur. Try new restaurants. Oh, so sophisticated. <laughs> yes, fearless as I was when I was younger. So my notes to myself was good, but could have been much better. Uh, uh, this is how I spent New Year's in 2011. New Year's Eve with family, went to my friend's house, Riverside Spring Quarter, Felguk, Dada at Avalon, Vegas, President's Memorial Day, August, December with family, roller coaster two plus years. That's referring to my brother because he passed away in 2009. 2011 would have been too. Transfer to USC, rushing, pledging, DSP, new fresh, new start, meet birthday, yeah, at Busby's, birthday adventure, rough two year mark, shape up, or ship the F out, order right before ADM accounting final, 3.43. We're just getting started, but this snapshot is like a very clear portrayal of who I was and the things that were important to me. I was a wild child. So New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, White Wonderland, Dada, Benny Benassi, Paul Van Dyke, Great Company, Thug Life! Eee! Year 2012, a year that will be filled with many significant changes after all the post-pledging, settling in the new LA lifestyle BS finally evades, so life will be good, been spending the majority of my time at home or with family, hermit crab at its finest, what what? We'll see how everything plays out for better or worse, really looking forward to road trips and adventures. Yeah, overall amazing start to the new year, very excited for what's ahead. Who for thought, unless it's mad, passionate, extraordinary love, it's a waste of your time there are too many mediocre things in life love shouldn't be one of them yeah so that's what i thought about love before i definitely don't think love should be like this now but this is what i thought before live simple give more expect less january 2nd head pounding body aching honey and lemon tea recovery mode commencing now that's usually what happens after you go to raves you don't feel too good so here are 20 secrets to happiness that i wrote live beneath your means and within your seams return everything you borrow don't take things personally stop blaming others admit to mistakes donate all the clothes you haven't worn in the last three years to charity discreetly do something nice every day listen more talk less Take a walk outside, stop and smell the roses. The world is beautiful. Strive for excellence, not perfection. 
Excellence, not perfection. Noted. Be on time. Hmm, still need to be on time. Don't make excuses. Don't argue. Get organized. Have an agenda and follow it. Be kind to kind people and even kinder for unkind people. Yes. Take time to be alone. Cultivate good manners. Be humble. Understand and accept that life isn't always fair. Know when to say something and when to keep your mouth shut. Learn from the past. Plan for the future and live in the present. Don't sweat the small stuff. Ooh, this is so good. So this is, I didn't write this. I found this probably on Tumblr or on Thought Catalog, which is this really awesome publishing site that has now just, but back then when it first started, it was so good. It was like a gold mine of these listicles and these bullet point life, trying to navigate life kind of stuff. So January 5th, just spend time with my friends, dim sum, dinner, ordered a bunch of drinks. It was a good day and mañana will be even better because third life. Note to self, relax, chill the F out, dude. So the relaxed part was about my ex. This is like when we first started talking and I tried really hard to be like cool and unavailable, pretended like nothing phased me, but everything phased me. So that was that. And the day after, the reason why I was so excited was because we hung out with Molly again. And I just did that for New Year's and I just did it again. This is the first time I did back to back. I'm usually very disciplined with spacing it months out where I used to be. I haven't done any of this stuff in like five, six, six, seven years. January 8th, ridiculously throbbing head, ache all day. One full day late, crack out for sure. January 9th, first day of classes. First of all, note to self, never going to do this to my body ever again, never ever. Got to start being more responsible and less impulsive. Was fun while it lasted, but recovery sucks. Some massive balls the second time around. Moving on, plans, live, school, here we go. So here I'm just bringing Breaking down my spring quarter, summer, fall, and spring of 2013. January 10th, promises. Email dad every day. Read fa once a month. Okay, I should do that every day, but sure. Once a month is better than nothing. This is for my spiritual practice. Dinner, wine with the girls, cleaning, planning, organizing, trying really hard to convince myself, but don't think it's working. I think trying really hard to convince myself that my, the guy that I liked, I think that might be hmm? and then on to the next one <laughs> i'm so dramatic i want you but i don't want you but you don't want me do you want me i don't know on to the next one pre rose with p rose pre-game went to the row which is like the party row at usc complete sh show i was on a mission to find the guy that i liked couldn't find him i was so sad i went just went home woke up drunk drunk shower drunk breakfast got ready did my hair drunk got on campus drunk turns into hangover wanted to shoot myself hard in accounting now chilling waiting for classes at 6 p.m yep so that was my life i did it again that night pregame the row part two the teehee was because i found guy that I liked. Okay, that was my life. So January 4th, got home, yogurt and berries, chilled with PNN, planned and organized, worked out, got ready for Shen Yuan. Wanted the best performance I've seen. Went to get blue velvet cake at milk. Some pretty epic conversations, Doritos and cheese, more cake. It is the sweet, simple things in life, which are the real ones after all. Friday, January 20th, take everything with a grain of salt. No title, don't overthink. Have fun and just enjoy life for what it is. No need to force anything to happen. If it happens, good. If not, life goes on. Blah, blah, blah. It's going to be a good day. And then we went to Busby's. Busby's was the sports bar that my friends and I frequented. It's a guaranteed good time. It's always very messy. I don't want to use that word. It starts with an S, ends with show, but it's always a good time. And that's what we did a lot. Self-reflection time! January 21st, 2012. Two week long drinking binge has got to stop. Focus, focus on what's important. Do work. Gym regularly, keep it up and eat healthy. No more drunk munchies. Catch up with all schoolwork by the end of this weekend. Currently falling in love with Brazil, dead mouse plus Haley. Yeah. A strange game, the only willing move is not to play. <laughs> yeah, dating was a very strange game. The only winning move is to not play. Just don't ever catch feelings. Be soft, don't let the world make you hard. Do not let the pains make you hate. Do not let the bitterness steal your sweetness. Take pride that even though the rest of the world may disagree, you still believe it to be a beautiful place. 
I agree. February 2nd, grab brunch before accounting. Nice catching up. Accounting was super sweet. Oh my god, the feeling when things balance out. Guess managerial accounting isn't so bad after all. Nerd talk did attend a big four networking event tonight. I'm 98% sure I will not pursue a career related to tax, audit, and advisory. KPMG and EY spoke highly of their summer leadership programs and were super enthusiastic, which completely sucked me in. However, none of them are actually passionate about what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. The only constant in life is change. Yep. 九点到十二点，他谈到我们俩的关系，他关系，他被他以前的女朋友伤得很重。Something. <laughs> I can't even read what I wrote. And then fast forward, got an internship to go to Coachella. Yeah, that was my childhood. And I think after this, what did I do? It was Dash Berlin. So here's a stub for Dash Berlin. Okay. What else? What else? This is fun. I don't know. All right, March 23rd. This is important because it's my brother's birthday. Happy birthday, Clem. Scrambled eggs and toast for brunch. Homebound for CP, CP's cousin party. My cousins call it CP cousin party. And I'm very bright now. Okay. It's still very bright. I think it's okay. Uh, really weird how much things have changed. Caught up with my first boyfriend. Really weird how two people who used to talk every day end up having nothing to say to each other. I just love being in the city, looking up, only seeing patches of the sky blocked by skyscrapers. I don't know, it feels like home. I just enjoy the whole hustle and bustle ambiance. Crowded space, don't know, but I absolutely love it. New York, two more years, I'm coming for you. So this is, I already wanted to come here. Just read through all old emails with my first boyfriend. Hmm, honestly haven't thought about that relationship since when we broke up. Lol. Anyway, made me realize how necessary it is. All the stress for no reason. The fights, the expectations, the disappointments. The more I find out about myself, the less I want to fully open up to others. I give and forgive way too easily, but that's who I am. And there's nothing I can do about it. And why should I? Being able to give without expecting anything in return and being able to forgive no matter the circumstances should be a good thing. Something to be proud of. But if the other party starts taking advantage of those two traits, IDK, just no bueno. Go to all classes, pay attention, take bomb notes, do homework, day of, questions, ask professor, stop being a b-word. I love calling myself a b-word because that's what my brother would call me. He's like, stop being a little bitch. I'm like, okay, I'm okay. As of now, number one focus equals me. Obviously, family is above that. Why should I be stressing over stupid stuff? Unanswered texts, texts from slutties, etc. Why should I plan my weekend around anyone else's weekend regardless if they do the same for me? I finally have time to myself. Embrace it, Rowena. Don't mistake boredom with loneliness. Be comfortable and accept the silence within yourself. Reach out to homies who you've been neglecting. To my homies. Reach out to my homies. Yes. Go out and meet fresh new faces. Gain more perspective. This is what being young is about. Being able to do as you please. Me time. Everything else will follow. Guess I'll be going home for a day or two this weekend. I feel good. F yeah. P.S. F-U-S-A. I see you. Coachella freaking out because I didn't know why I was feeling the way I was. Foreign emotions and feelings that I haven't felt in so long. Weird. Was I jealous? No, but hurt. That his ex texted him slightly, but not really. Honestly, after four months of back-to-back -back concerts and raves and events and partying and BS and more partying, I'm exhausted. It was fun while it lasted, don't get me wrong, but I'm honestly getting bored of everything. Maybe it was because I wasn't on drugs at Coachella, but it just wasn't that fun. Or maybe it was because I was so burnt out and tired or because, meh, I don't know. It's getting complicated again. Question for the past month, what do I want? I think I'm just freaking out because nothing is going as planned and I'm slightly not doing well in school. All right, and then I write something else. I feel that at this point, after a solid five months or so, we've reached a crossroads, we've hit a wall. There's only so much more we can do traveling down this path. I think I know what I want now. Do I? Because this is April and it takes until August for us to be like an official couple. So, yeah, and then we went to Porter Robinson and Marion. This was during Spitfire days, like the very, very beginning when Porter started. And this is on a Wednesday. So, on a school night, 
This is just what I used to do. Oh, and for those asking if I still go to these things, I think you know the answer. The answer is no, I haven't drank. I haven't touched anything I used to touch in six, seven years since I moved to New York in 2015. A huge part of it is a personal choice and another huge part of it is a spiritual thing. I just remember reading the book that I read for my spiritual practice, paraphrasing, you don't see Buddhas, Taoists, and gods swigging, you know, wine or smoking cigarettes or smoking anything else. So I was like, okay, then I'm not gonna do it. Very, very simple. Uh, Marquee Las Vegas. I used to go to Vegas all the time. It was like my backyard. It's not a good sign when you walk into a club and you think to yourself, ah, I'm home. Yeah, that's what excess felt like to me, but it's not good. Life is a choice, it is your choice. Choose consciously, choose wisely, choose honestly, choose happiness. Do not spoil what you have by desiring what you have not. Remember that what you now have was once among the things you only hope for. May 1st, side note, I always talk about how crazy it is that things change so quickly. Looking at my timeline, Clement's Facebook inbox reflecting, wow, time really flies. I'm at a pretty content state and improve on a few things, especially not half-assing things, but I'm getting there. I really like this me. Focus, focus. we will call to see how I'm doing, how cute, pleasant surprise. When things are good with the guy, I'm good. When things are bad, I'm really bad. That's what consumed me in 2012 and 13 and 14. Yes, studied. I think this is like finals time. Went to San Francisco, ate too many edibles. Yup, smoked in an alleyway, sure. One thing that I'm very proud of is I've actually never smoked a cigarette in my entire life. And at this point I never will, so. By June 9th, I came up with an ultimatum for myself. Stop talking is number one, two is get together. But I still wait another two months before I actually implement that. And then family and then friends and then stuff and then stuff and then saw Dash Berlin again. Ooh, this is juicy. It's weird. When I like someone or want something, I get tunnel vision. It's like they're all I see, all I want is to achieve is that something. To get it, to reach that goal, to make whatever it is that I want come to fruition. And I can't help it. That's just how I work, I guess. All this talk about the future and Paris and next semester seems... We are sharing the vastly fickle to be completely honest. At this point in my life, I've come to realize the practicality of being realistic and how important that is. Talk is cheap. I think we can make this work, but I'm not about to convince you or anyone why they should be with me. Regardless, I will most likely always cherish this relationship. This is the July 28th. And then I come out with a chart. This is August 13th. We skipped some days, half a, half a month. No one person defines who you are. They only compliment you. I agree. What do I want? This is very good. This is very broken down and very, very succinct. What do I want and then how can I make it happen? So for relationships, platonic wise, to me, everyone and everyone, how do I do that? More mixers, be more outgoing, approachable, ask questions. I want to broaden my network and friends outside of DSP and FTC. Just my business fraternity circle and my high school friends call ourselves FTC. I'd rather have four quarters than a hundred pennies, continually hold on to those four quarters, but at the same time, never rule out potential friendships. You never know how much someone can surprise you. So for my parents, I wanna be more patient and I can do that by working on myself. I want to talk more consistently with them. Skype, talk on a regular basis, not just when I want. Be more open, transparent, and available. Don't shut them out, keep them updated on my life always. These really are the last few years I guess to spend with them so during this time i was a lot closer to my parents compared to wh how, like where i used to be in 2012 but 2012 and 2009 now they're like we're like this the three of us are like this so i guess it's just showing things really do take time and that it's okay self so, things to work on <laughs> i think all of these are still the same it's still the same I don't like talking about myself. I'm very extreme. I don't think I'm pessimistic. I don't think I ever was. Need for stability, don't need that anymore. Lack of motivation and drive, still deal with that now, six years later. Being super easy on myself, no accountability, monumental lack of self-discipline, yep. Myself in a nutshell. 
So then it's professional and then it's planning out the rest of the year. Fall 2012, definitely want to spend my time doing more worthwhile significant things. Last semester was amazing, but one of that in my four year career is more than enough. Priority number one, academic slash grades, job, DSP, self slash health, or read more books, five, enjoy four months before going abroad. And then I'm planning to go abroad. I ended up going to Hong Kong. I really wanted to go to Europe at first. So I think, yeah, it was a very rocky journey because relationship status was rocky. So I was rocky. And then once relationship status stabilized, that brought a lot of stability to other areas of my life. Yeah, looking back, that's not healthy at all, but this is just how things worked out. And sometimes you need to go through that to know that it's not what you should do. See, I'm telling you guys, when my life is a mess and when I'm very emotionally unstable i'm very consistent with journaling but when things are better and i'm more stable then i just i just stop journaling completely yeah i even wrote oh no august to october equals lost months because i'm just thriving and happy in a relationship and doing trying to do my best in all areas of my life so yeah that was a lot um I don't know how you guys feel about that. I mentioned this in a previous video of how when I was younger, I used drinking, going out, partying as a way of distraction and as a way of escaping. And I really feel that I'm doing that now with work. Like my life revolves around my work and the things that I do for YouTube, for my channel, for Beauty Within, which I think it's great because it's for a greater cause and it's for a greater good, but I'm still using it as a way to run away and to avoid things that are like deeply rooted in here. And in that video, I was like, I don't know what it is, but I'll get back to you when I figure it out. And I think I kind of figured it out. It's this deeply rooted fear in wanting to be perfect, not wanting to let other people down, not wanting to like come off a certain way. Like I'm very, I'm very prideful. I'm very like, I care a lot about my image. I want to be i think that's what it means that you want to be perfect you want people to view you a certain way you want people to see you a certain way and i think that really held me back from fully stepping into myself and being myself or as much as i am myself in front of the camera i think there's still a long way to go for me to be fully myself because i think i'm scared that people are gonna judge me i'm scared that people are gonna think i'm funny like it makes me not do things that i would normally do um which brings up the question well what i normally do i don't know you know you go through life and you get older and you get scared and you develop notions and you really start forgetting who you are all right so with that this was um i hope it was helpful and it was fun seeing me not like this and seeing like a different side of me or seeing my younger self and yeah hopefully it paints a picture of who i am now or it gives you more data points into who i was and the things that i valued and how through time and through effort and through dedication and persistence and faith and believing in yourself anything really is possible it really is those feelings deep in your gut deep in your heart that you know this is who you are in your core and you just need to realize that tap into those feelings do the reflection do the looking inward do the putting yourself under a microscope in a constructive way. Going back to this thing, I think this is like probably one of the best ways you can be constructively helpful with yourself. So the first column is what do you want? And the second column is how can you make it happen? Because I think we want a lot of things, we want to do a lot of things, but wanting to do something versus actually taking steps to do something is very different. So by doing a how are you going to make what you want happen, that's like coming up with actionable steps to reach the habits, the more positive lifestyle habits that you want to develop. So with all of that, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope we can all do the things we want to do and be the people we want to be. And remember, things take time and it's okay. But still work hard.
and be your best self. And with that, here's a hug. <laughs> Bye. See you guys next time. Bye.